Thank you, Ludovico. Um, no. um, we'll be able to ask Ludovico questions at the end. Um, but now we're going to move on to Soren Herman, who is um, Assistant Professor in Digital Heritage at the Cyprus Institute, and he is going to be talking about unsupervised evaluation of virtual museums. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Um, good evening. Thank you for coming to listen to us. I hope it will answer your expectations. Uh, the work that I will present here is uh, done uh, as part of a large uh, European project aimed Okay, so the work that I will present here is part of a large uh, European project that aims at understanding what is a virtual museum, which are the technologies that uh, have to be employed, how, where, and uh, so forth. The name of the project is uh, VMAST, and it is running already for three years, and we have one more year. Uh, part of uh, the work that I, I will present here is done in a collaboration with uh, the University of uh, Lunds. Um, so, <clears throat> the work um, that I'm personally involved with the, the team regards uh, how to set up a theoretical background for virtual museums. And uh, as part of it, we, were, we decided to start looking into what people think about virtual museums, uh, how they perceive it, which led later on on how to evaluate it, and we proposed here it started first as a class exercise, then it expanded uh, a bit more, and eventually we, we would like also to come up with a scheme of how to evaluate uh, virtual museums that are done in the context of uh, cultural heritage. Uh, said that, we also wanted to look which are the factors that influence such uh, evaluations, such as age of visitors, their cultural background, uh, their uh, um, academic background, the context of the evaluation itself, because we are in a very mobile uh, world with very blur uh, boundaries, so we wanted to see also if this has an influence or, or not. And eventually we have another uh, goal that is at start now, how we can uh, define and uh, describe uh, noise of a digital uh, uh, communication outcome. Noise in the sense of what's the, what is the distance between what the producers of the app, in this case an app, intended to do and what the users are uh, perceiving. So the case study uh, well, is in Sweden. Uh, this is the website. There is also an app that you can download it uh, for free. Uh, the site itself is uh, one of the major archaeological sites uh, in Sweden. It was partially excavated. The excavations are still uh, going on. Many, many objects uh, came out uh, from these uh, excavations, which are uh, hosted at uh, the uh, Historical Museum of the University of uh, Lunds. And you can see here temporary exhibitions, uh, also permanent exhibitions. The app uh, is running uh, on any mobile platform, and it includes, it has uh, 3D narratives, video, and also an uh, augmented uh, reality part. Uh, by, by the way, the app is very simple. It is very simple to use. Also, its content, it was deliberately kept uh, at a quite a straightforward uh, level. Uh, it shows, uh, well, as you can see from snapshots here, the village itself, reconstruction of a house, and something what is going on uh, inside uh, this house. Um, we have interviewed uh, the producers of this uh, app, which is a team of uh, archaeologists, media design, um, computer graphics person, and uh, the uh, curator, who is uh, the curator it's, uh, himself has a, a background in uh, museology. So, in theory, it's a very good interdisciplinary team. Uh, they decided from the beginning that because apps, new media uh, technologies are for teenagers, so then the app will be very useful for teenagers. 
The design itself followed a, a Hollywoodian narrative in the sense that we have a scene which is very well located in times and, and place. And uh, in the app, you have uh, several motifs that are very common for uh, computer games. For example, uh, the choice of music was made intentionally very dramatic to emphasize uh, aspects of power and importance. Uh, then uh, you have some uh, other noises that uh, alert you that something else uh, will happen. <laughs> and um, at the end, also the music, uh, according to the producers, should help uh, introducing new themes or ending existing themes. Um, the app is very simple, very basic. You don't need anything particular uh, to use it. So we said, OK, let's try this app both uh, in Cyprus and in Sweden. Um, we have given very basic uh, information on how to evaluate it. We just ask people to write a comprehensive review and uh, be honest. So at the beginning, we had some uh, results, which were OK. But uh, we asked people to try to do a bit more and invest a bit more time. and. Uh, well, we also offered them free coffee, so it helped a lot. And um, then they wrote uh, much more. And uh, we didn't uh, ask what particularly to review, which aspects. Whatever they felt it was important, they should have put it down. So our uh, groups were, uh, there were two groups of students, one from uh, uh, humanities, so more uh, archaeology, oriented, and the other one from uh, computer sciences and uh, physics. So this, this is an uh, example of, uh, of some evaluations in uh, Cyprus and uh, in Sweden. Um, well, you can read a bit if you, if you want. Um, it, it was uh, presented, we asked them deliberately, and it was presented to us uh, as a free text. Uh, what we have done was reading carefully through every text and trying to extract uh, the relevant uh, information out of it. So after we have analyzed all the written material that we received, uh, we came up that uh, all the users were focusing on these criteria. So they were, they were foc they they uh, wrote something about the animation, the narration, content, the content itself, the augmented reality, and an overall impression of uh, the app. And for each criteria, uh, people were referring to uh, several uh, values. Um, so we ranked the comments according to qualitative criteria from positive to negative. And uh, um, actually, uh, we didn't interfere at all with anything here. So this is what they decided that it's important. And I think they, it is quite good. Uh, this is an example. Uh, it, does not matter. it does not matter if you don't see much. This is uh, how we organized uh, our uh, data and uh, analyzed it. Um, so we had some very interesting uh, results when uh, comparing uh, and looking into the text. Almost half of the people complained about the augmented reality, that it distracted them. Um, a quarter of people wanted to see more of content. It was not enough for them. The movie itself is, by the way, something like seven minutes. So the app is really, really uh, condensed. And many, uh, quite a lot actually, uh, complained uh, that uh, we need a better synchronization between the 3D and the narration. So going into more uh, details, you have, see, uh, I've put here a comparison between the positive and the negative uh, answers in each uh, category. So, that was also something very interesting because most of the people criticized every, every criteria. They didn't like 
particularly the animation, the narration, the content, the augmented reality, but everybody had an overall very good feeling about the applications. So they were happy that it was done. Um, they believed that this is a good future and it should be in, we should invest uh, more on that. Then uh, we went on to compare the results between uh, uh, sent people from with a scientific background, I mean exact sciences, and people from uh, humanities. And it was also very interesting to see uh, how they did the evaluation and what they were looking at. So uh, science people were very uh, careful to look and define much more criteria and uh, detailed uh, values. They criticized, uh, of course, that was expected that they criticized technical uh, details, but they also uh, gave uh, much more importance on the narration itself. Um, but uh, they didn't have any particular or different feelings about the augmented reality compared to the humanities people. On the other hand, also it was expected that humanities people were very interested to find more information. They uh, acknowledged the fact, and it was a positive sign that archaeological data was used, but they wanted to know the source of these data. So they required uh, data transparency. And they had, both groups had uh, similar feelings about the uh, animation part of the app. Uh, regarding uh, the noise, none of the reviewers uh, ha have seen this app as devoted for teenagers. Actually, we had uh, uh, reviewers spanning from the age of 7, 8, 12, 15 to almost 70. None said that, yeah, this is for kids. So, in a way, that was interesting. Uh, even though the makers of the app paid a lot of attention to the music, most people generally disliked it, and they found it uh, disturbing. So this is another point to, to mark for the uh, makers of the app. Uh, many people find uh, the fly through, the viewpoints, and the overall 3D and augmented reality very disturbing. So they couldn't uh, focus on too many things. So we, if they focused on the navigation and 3D, they lost the narration and, and vice versa. And uh, most reviewers understood, even without knowing anything about uh, the Iron Age of uh, Sweden, they understood that women were important. But how and why it was less clear. And actually, one of the uh, users in Sweden made a very interesting remark asking why we have put the woman there. Maybe as an answer to some political uh, correct uh, pressure that we had, because we should emphasize also other aspects of uh, women's role in society. So, summing up, we uh, presented here, I hope, it's convincing weight of uh, evaluation. In a way, we are doing the reverse thing that we came up with the criterias after the free evaluation. Um, asking people to review an app and not just simply answering some question uh, gave the users a sense of responsibility and a way of uh, that we trust their uh, judgment, which uh, triggered them to, to invest in it. So they did uh, they invested a lot of uh, intellectual effort in it. Um, having a free text uh, evaluation allowed uh, the users to express many, many aspects that in a, in a questionnaire usually you cannot do because you are limited to answering the question and you are focusing on answering the questions. Um, we have found out that the academic background of the interviewed people is important because they are focusing on different uh, aspects, not necessarily the one that are, uh, that people think that they are uh, normal. I mean, they are, it's, that it's a directly, direct relationship. So, even though the team that produced this app is 
truly interdisciplinary and they are all professionals. The reviewers, who, by the way, are none uh, experts or uh, doing research in museum, museology, and so forth, found the weak points. What happens then with apps that are not done in such an environment? Or we don't know who is doing these apps? Hmm? That's, a, I think, a good question. So we will continue with our uh, evaluations. We will, the uh, next stage will be to see if the place where we are doing the evaluation has any importance, closer to the archaeological site, closer to the museum, or not, or in other places. And uh, also, we will make a comparison between uh, the Swedish and the Cypriot evaluations, and we will move on also to uh, other uh, groups from other uh, areas. So, thank you very much. <laughs>